Hello everybody, my name is Joseph Dolan. and I work as a guide here in Boyle Abbey. I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague Thomas Campbell today. Um, we're together we're going to give you a, a brief introduction to Boyle Abbey. So Thomas, can you tell us a little bit about the Cistercian monks, their origins and why they decided to settle here in Boyle? Well, the Cistercian order started off in France around about 1098. They were established by an abbot, Robert. Robert had been a Benedictine abbot and he decided to leave the order himself and a group of disenfranchised monks. And they would set up their first site at Citeaux in Burgundy. From Citeaux, they'd set up Clairvaux, and eventually, in around about 1139, the Cistercian order were invited to Ireland. They were invited to Ireland by Saint Malachy, who was the Archbishop of Armagh. In 1142, they set up Mellifont Abbey, their first site in Ireland, and from Mellifont, in 1148, a group of Cistercian monks headed out west, and eventually they would establish what is known as Boyle Abbey today in 1161. Great, Thomas. Now, can you talk to us a little bit about the layout of the site, starting over here on the West Range? Well, the Western Range is where the Lay Brothers would have been located. You would have had the Lay Brothers dormitories, and directly below you would have had the grain stores and wine cellars. Very good. And what about the South Range over this direction? Well, the South Range was made up of the kitchens, the refectory, and what would have been the calefactory. The calefactory was the warming room. That's where the fires were lit. The Very refectory, good. of course, was the dining room. Very good. Um, and over here on the East Range? The East Range would have been made up of the sacristy, the chapter house, and the parlour. Very good. Also, can you tell us about a typical life, a day in the life of a Cistercian monk? Well, the prime monks who would have woke up in their dormitory directly above, they were the educated monks. They would have come down the, the uh, night stairs into the church and they would have started their day around about five o'clock in the morning with Mass. Uh, from Mass they then would have gone on to uh, write scripts and their texts. They would have produced them in the scriptorium, which, were just, which was just off the parlour. Very good. Can you tell me what circumstances would have led to the decline in the Cistercian order? Well, in the 1500s we're all familiar with Henry VIII of England. Henry VIII in 1536 introduced the dissolution of the monasteries. Under that program, Boyle Abbey would eventually pass on to Sir John King in 1603. Sir John King's descendants, of course, would go on to construct King House up the street. Sir John King would convert Boyle Abbey into a military barracks. He would also demolish the original Eastern Range and he would build a new Eastern Range that would incorporate um, a residence for himself. He would also fortify the structure. He would add on the tower onto the Western Range as well. Very good. And finally, can you tell me about the last abbot that was here in Boyle Abbey? Well, the last abbot came to a very unfortunate end. In 1584, he was detained in Dublin and he was given an ultimatum. He would either convert over to Protestantism or he would um, get hanged. They also gave him the option of uh, a governorship. They tried to bribe him. They offered him the governorship of Connacht to get him to convert over to Protestantism. That didn't work. They also tortured him. That again didn't work. And eventually he was hanged. Okay, Thomas, uh, will you show us some of the carvings over there on the uh, church Certainly for a few minutes? Yeah. Uh, quite a nice cabin. It consists of a dog fighting with a dog fighting into a human head. And you can see a serpent or a snake coiled up down below. Could this mean the body fighting with the soul? We're not sure. However, an interesting thing is this cabin was by a man called the Ballantubber Master. The Ballantubber Master gets his name from Ballantubber Abbey in County Mayo. And he was here around about 1215. Great. Could you also show me the carving of the four monks in the vineyard? Of course, Joe. So this is four monks in the vineyard, and as you can see, the monks are holding on very, very tightly, clasping onto the branches. That's said to relate to St. John's Gospel. I am the vine, and you are the branches. And again, it's the work of the ballant of the master. Great. And Thomas, finally, there's one lovely carving I'd like to see. It's called the uh, 14 figures. Could you show that? Indeed. Talk Joe. a little bit about that carving. So just beside us, 
inside the western doorway and window. You have the If you look very, very closely, it's quite hard to see, but within the swirls there are faces. There's 14 figures in total. One of these figures has a beard, and a beard, of course, was a sign of high status in Irish society during that time. Very good. Great. So, on behalf of Thomas and myself, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'd like to thank all the people who work here in the Abbey, visitor services and industrial personnel. We'll be posting this video on Heritage Ireland website to have it up for you to enjoy as part of Heritage Week. Thank you very much. Bye.